Great, so now I'd like to introduce the, uh, the panelists, one of the founders of IM, and uh, two people from companies, uh, from VCs who have invested in IM. So on the stage, please, Flo Meister from IM, Stefan Glinzer from Passion Capital, and uh, Jason Whitmire from Early Bird. Thanks, guys. Take a seat, take a seat. So uh, thank you all for being here, much appreciated. Um, Flo, you're one of the founders of IM. You've been there since the beginning. So tell me, um, a starter for 10, shall we say, um, <clears throat> is analog photography dead? Yes. No, of course not. I mean, that's, I, I actually have to do this um, because I just bought that basically. It's my favorite. It's an old Ilford 400 ISO film, and I just have to do that. I hope the flash doesn't turn off because it would, uh, there you go. Lucky me. You're all going to be famous. Yay. Thank you. Um, well, I think I think what what's what's really um, the thing here is if you look what you just said, like how many of you guys basically um, took photos with their phones um, last year in 2013? There was 380 billion photos taken. Thanks again. <laughs> 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 uh, 380 billion photos taken in one single year. You know that's actually um, 10 times higher than um, four years ago. And if you think a couple of years ahead, there will be soon more photos taken in one year alone than ever in photographic history. Yeah? And um, that's also because of these little things. And um, what um, this basically new generation of photographer, us, basically you guys, is all about, that you have the tools um, to make that happen and don't have to pay tons of e expensive equipment um, in order to, well, pursue your passion in, in this creative field. And that's what personally excites me, us, and, and my team on a daily basis. So, I mean, uh, this has been enabled by leaps in, in technology that, that are still ongoing. So how, I mean, how does the ongoing improvement in technology change the way we take pictures, change the way we share pictures? Right, um, so if you, if you look at, um, if you think about, um, well, the, the, the sensor of a camera, which is pretty much the brain, um, and if you think I'm like wearing this super high fancy Canon or Nikon camera right now, um, this sensors are getting smaller and smaller. Yeah? But what my brain can still, what my brain is, uh, what my brain is different is because if I take a photo of you guys here right now, my brain remembers that David is sitting here right there and um, is not wearing a mic in his hand, but is lined up, and um, Stefan and Jason to my left, um, because my brain just remembers that. Yeah? And I think this is soon going to be possible on a mobile phone as well. You know that you take a photo, you just zoom out of the image in the frame, and have all the aspects and, and, and stuff which is around you in there. Uh, which opens up tons of new opportunities for actually, well, getting to the shot that you like, but also um, basically in terms of finding photos that you're interested in and can, can make money, in, uh, money with in the end. Talk, talking about the first couple of years of, of, of IM, how important has having a, a mobile platform like iOS been to um, grow your, your user base, to grow your platform? Massively important. I mean, basically, we are all about, we, that's how we started, all about mobile. Um, when, when I moved to New York in 2009 um, and wanted to become a super cool photographer, um, as you can see, that didn't quite work out. Um, but on the other hand, um, well, I, my whole stuff, my equipment got stolen, and I got an, and used iPhone 3G, basically. And um, if I just think about the last four years um, and all the fancy phones in your pockets here, um, what kind of huge step forward this was already. Uh, and um, that quite just excites me so much to see um, or to think a couple of years ahead where we are in terms of, well, the megapixels that we're gonna, uh, um, gonna, gonna see on the phones uh, in terms of um, basically the editing uh, features on the phone or platforms like I am basically provide you with, um, it's just the beginning. You mentioned um, you know, things like more, more megapixels on phones. I mean, <laughs> surely that's just a bit pointless. Or, or to put it another way, how are the advancements that you can foresee in the next few years, how are they gonna change the way I am works. Yeah, so I think the, the, the bigger here is not really um, how to take photos, honestly, and apply a couple of gimmicky filters and annoy our friends on Facebook, um, but rather um, how to actually find that cool images that interest me or you or um, basically uh, surface the quality ones and the ones that are monetizable in the end. Yeah? And um, so what we all do is we create a digital oblivion, uh, photos on Twitter, on Facebook, um, on other platforms, basically, um, and it's really hard to to find those photos. And I think that's what what we want to what we want to solve. Yeah? Um, and it's it's more about making that happen on a technological level and through search, um, than rather editing photos more. Um, and the mobile phone or the mobile device is for the f the missing piece um, in that kind of value chain in photography um, by enabling us to find locations or time or event components, um, which opens up a whole new data set 
for, for basically finding the images that we are all interested in. Um, well, let's, let's move on and talk about IM specifically then. Um, yeah. When did you launch, remind me, Will? So actually it was in the uh, in summer 2011. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and how, how big are you now? What, what, what sort of numbers are we talking about? Got it. Um, so obviously like for, for us, the most important thing is w that we, I mean, we, we didn't just build in community here. You know, we, we joined it from day one. Yeah? I mean, we are part of it. And um, that was always our secret, that we wanted to be authentic, real respect um, everyone who's getting or working with us on a daily basis uh, when it comes to copyrights, data privacy, and all of that. And I think that was our sec secret to kind of hitting the first million photographers in January last year um, and coming up to 10 um, by December. And at the moment, we are roughly going at a million downloads per month. What are you doing um, differently to other um, photography platforms? Yeah. So um, I think when you come to IAM, um, it's not the place where you find the birthday cakes, uh, the coffee mug shots, um, and, um, well, the selfies of your friends. Yeah? Um, what we try to do is really show you the, the, the content, the images, um, and like-minded people um, that you can connect with that matter to you uh, and that you're actually interested in. Um, and um, we are not a social network. We are a content company. Yeah? Um, and on the other hand, we want to help you to become better at what you do um, and also, in the end, help you to earn money with um, your best shots. Okay, uh, I want to bring in uh, the, the other panelists now, two, um, two guys from two of the, the, the most active um, startup VCs in Europe. Um, Stefan, you, you guys invested in IM at seed stage. Um, what was it that you saw in IM that you liked? I mean, just have a look at Florian and that <laughs> answers the question. Yeah, and Gene is here as well. So <laughs> there, there is a bunch of very good looking guys, four of them. <laughs> that so that likewise, that likewise. That, that, that usually <laughs> helps. <laughs> <laughs> that usually helps. Um, I think we are uh, looking at this market. It, it, it's one of those markets which gets constantly disruptive disrupted especially down to the uh, launch of, of iOS and, and the iPhone you know I personally started a, a mobile phone community called Flocknet I think in 2004 but with the Nokia stuff it just didn't work yeah and when Florian and his team pitched his or their view of how the mobile market mobile photography market will evolve we thought it's it's actually a great great opportunity of creating really not a copycat out of Europe but a proper own vision um, uh, based out of Europe, based out of Berlin. And, and we very much like their initial vision of focusing on the semi-pro or professional amateur photographers. And they had already in 2011 the vision of creating a marketplace, which we have announced just two months ago. It should have been faster, but OK, that's, <laughs> <a different laughs> that's, that's a different start topic. Up yeah. um, well, well, Flo, tell us a little bit about this, this marketplace that, yeah. you, uh, that you launched. Absolutely. Um, as as um, Stefan just mentioned, I mean, it was really um, one of the things we wanted to do. I mean, we don't consider ourselves as a stock photography company or something like that. You know, we want to become a photography company here. Um, but one important step um, to, well, um, taking someone who just discovers his passion in photography really early on um, to is basically to help him become better and becoming sort of a, like a pro. Uh, and that step um, gets shorter and shorter. Uh, and you only need a camera, which is a small to put it in your packet to do that, uh, to pocket and uh, to achieve that. Uh. Um, and the marketplace for us was, a, was an obvious step. Um, and um, well, we, we just opened up the, the, the beta um, invites for that. You're more than welcome to, to actually check that out on im.com slash market, um, which um, we will slowly roll out through the, through the weeks to come. And well, we have one simple goal, you know, to, to really pay out the first million dollars to, 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 to our photographers, you know, and that's just a number. If we achieve that, um, that's a massive, a massive thing for us. Can you really change the way that professional photography is done? I mean, is this, um, in essence, something that you can do by, by de blah, 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 making it more democratic and, and, and enabling people who aren't trained professionals to do it? I mean, certainly. I mean, think about it. I mean, we have a community spreads around, I think, more than 145 countries at the moment, right? And um, so if we work together with a client, for instance, a Lufthansa, yeah? Um, so, and these guys need photos in Japan or in, in, in Brazil of a beach um, of the Copacabana, for instance, uh, to promote um, photos on their Facebook um, brand page uh, for the upcoming World Cup. Um, we have very, very active and great photographers in these in this, uh, geographies. And what we can do is actually send those guys on assignments and tell them, you know, we have someone paying for really cool beach shots um, with palm trees in the back and the sunset. You know, why don't you produce that in, in a couple of hours and, and earn a little bit of money? 
Yeah? And just that um, is really revolutionizing the way, well, also journalism works uh, and, and how people um, get their content. And I don't have to send um, a star photographer um, with a plane to a different continent anymore. Uh, and um, that's just a, a massive, massive disruptive potential here. Jason, let's, let's bring you in. Um, you, you guys, Early Bird, invested at a Series A uh, stage. What do you think of how IM has um, grown to the point where it is today? Yeah, sure. I mean, if we take a step back and just look at our investment hypothesis um, as the basic unit of digital motion photos are some of the most engaging and successful business models on the internet, um, I think we kind of saw that phase. You, uh, you mentioned stock photography, um, Florian. We saw definitely the new phase is mobile. I mean, you know, if we look at stock photography as being the tip of the iceberg, um, what you've got under the ocean is something quite massive. And if we could um, find a transactional team that could monetize that, we felt that we would have um, a global business model um, and we would have something that's sustainably monetizable. Um, I think Stefan and, and, and Passion Capital came in at a very early stage, um, you know, and a lot of the iterations had already happened by the time we stepped on. Um, and it's just really nice to see the team making things happen. I think some of the announcements that we've seen over the last six months um, underscore that, um, you know, we think we've placed the right bet, and, um, and we think that um, looking at the KPIs and metrics, um, over the next um, 12 months that it'll be an exciting future. I think when we hit uh, 25 million um, photographers in that community, uh, we think that's the critical mass really to, um, to have uh, um, um, the type of um, photo um, stock with, which is um, you know, very nicely categorized and if you can, you can attach a value to that. So I think that's something that venture capitalists obviously we're always thinking about, um, you know, monetizable innovation, uh, not just innovation, and that's ex that excites us a lot. And just adding adding to that, I mean, I absolutely agree with Jason. And the, the beautiful thing is when we started out and set out um, for us, um, and that's what we all share here, was not how can we monetize off of our community. You know, what we wanted to do is, and that really what sets us apart from from also this kind of well usual tech kind of company uh, style. We want to build a business model for our community, you know, and actually make money with that. And that is super critical for us, and that's only the only way to succeed in mobile and to succeed in building building great communities. Well, talking about building a, a successful startup, which is sort of part of what we're what we're here today to to, to speak about. I mean, Jason, let me, let me come back to you, and then perhaps uh, Stefan can can chip in as well. Um, I think it's quite interesting that when it comes to investment and, and venture capital, people are so obsessed with figuring out how to get it, how to nail it down, blah blah blah, that they don't really consider too much what happens after the money's in the bank. So how how have you been um, assisting someone like I am post investment? Sure, I, I think there's a lot of things we, 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 we can do and should do. Um, uh, the good news is that most of the people on the IM board are entrepreneurs. Oftentimes we're repeat entrepreneurs, so she, we've been through the cycle one, two, or three times. Um, so I think the best we do is offer things like strategic coaching um, in different periods. Um, um, obviously, it, it's very heavily dependent on our network and what kind of value we can bring in that network. Also in hiring, I mean, we just um, um, raised a, n a not insignificant amount of capital for IM, and now we're in the process of, of deploying that um, that capital by hiring, um, strengthening the product um, bench, as well as uh, you know all types of functions across business development, um, marketing, um, et cetera. And these are things that you know a in the very early phases you usually don't have. I mean, you know, this was a very um, uh, small team. I, I often joke with Florian that they were eating rats for the first 12 months, oh, and, then, <laughs> and then they moved on to more sophisticated um, uh, menus. But um, <coughs> it's still pretty pretty modest, so do no one get alarmed here. But um, um, so I think that's what we, we bring. And, and, and you know, if you look at the, the five board members, we're all venture capitalists. Um, Florian has also established an independent advisory board um, with a lot of the, the titans in the industry. Um, and I think between all of us, um, you know, when the team needs something, we offer it. But, um, you know, we're not, um, 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 you know, uh, uh, behaving like, you know, w we're the guys who, who know better. We're not the proxy management team, but we let these guys run the show. And, um, you know, in the background, we give as much support as we can. Stefan, how does, how does the, the seed investor stay involved um, a couple of years down the line? I mean, how, how are you now acting as an investor? 
Yeah, I mean, let, let, let's, I'm, 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 I'm totally with you, Jason, and, and we are, as, as investors, you are supportive for the company, but let's not forget, the company is created by the entrepreneurs. Yeah. They build and create the company, they build and create the community, it's not the investors. Yeah. We can be helpful and we add our two cents, but then it's down to the investors to, to take it on or not. What really helps in this case that, I mean, we've all been, I, I've been 15 years entrepreneur and now I'm in three years a venture capitalist, so in my heart I'm probably still more on the entrepreneurial side. Um, but it's not only the board, it's not only the, the founders and the investors, it's, th it's the spirit within whether or not the whole team ha can create the spirit in the team. It has been initially the red eating five employees, now the team is a little bit bigger. So we have uh, number 13 on the Chinese menu from time to time. <laughs> um, it, it, it's really down to supporting the vision of the founding team. That's what you do as an investor. I mean, we, we are here at Apple. What would Apple be without its founder? Uh, nothing, nothing. And if you look to other big tech companies, to the real successful ones, I mean, Google is still driven by the founders. Amazon is still driven by the founders. Uh, Apple, Facebook is still driven by the founders. And look at other big tech companies like eBay or Yahoo, where the founders have left. Well, not that successful, sort of. Well, I mean, talking about then um, that continued um, emotional investment, I mean, you, you and your team, you, you and your co-founders, perhaps I should say, have been building this for a few years. You're in a very unique position to have seen the, the Berlin scene sort of blossom and bloom. <coughs> how, I mean, how have you done it? I mean, honestly, um, it's a very simple question. I mean, um, a very simple answer to that because um, what you guys said as well, I mean, um, like Lawrence Ramsey and me, we wouldn't have been able to do that alone, you know? And luckily, um, we have some, some guys, I see them in the audience here, um, from the team who are way smarter than us, um, who, who joined us and joined our vision in, in building something here, you know? And that's on an everyday basis, um, the key to success, uh, and um, and that's also where Stefan and Jason and the other board members bring a lot of um, well advice to the table. Is just um, how do you work with people who are way smarter than you, <laughs> and also um, how do you find those guys um, if they haven't heard about you, and how does the chemistry um, that one doesn't I know that I'm not supposed to swear it doesn't how do I put that <laughs> uh, doesn't um, impact uh, your overall team culture. Yeah. Thank you. Um, anyway, so that's, uh, that's kind of the, 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 the big thing for us. And, and, and it sounds cheesy, I know, but we've always stayed real. Yeah? And we've always been really, really authentic and, and never screwed anyone. Yeah? And neither us, neither our community. Um, and that is a secret sauce. Yeah? Um, it's as simple as it sounds. Um, and apart from that, I mean, yeah, well, um, well w if I've been eating rats, but it's, it's really about hard work as well. You know, like, um, I, I don't know, my last holiday was on 4th October 2012, uh, 2011. Yeah? And that's, I don't know about you guys, but it's not After me. our investment, <laughs> that's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like the day after, now, really. <laughs> and ciao. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if, and that's the point. Like, all of us, I mean, we just in, in, in invest a lot of time uh, into that and, and our personal resources. And um, honestly, I get this question a lot. Like, aren't you done now? Of course not. You know, what have you achieved? We haven't, we haven't, we haven't done anything. You know, what, what I would be so stupid to stop this now because we are in the 10 years industry change um, of the photography industry, you know? Like, just think about the three to five years ahead, what's possible there, and, and we can be part of that. Uh, and um, that is reason enough to, to continue to, um, to, well, well, to do that, yeah. You mentioned, Dave, you mentioned the Berlin startup scene. It's a, it's a great scene here, what has happened, but I think it's important that we start creating companies who don't end up on the sell side, but yeah. end up on the buy side. And I, I think now with the, uh, with the business model and, and, and all the, uh, the corporation and the, and the upcoming um, announcements over the next couple of weeks, uh, I, I think I am is one of the players who, who has the chance to achieve it. I mean, talking about Berlin, and, and I think one of the interesting questions and the subject that pops up quite a lot, do, do you think things would have been different if you'd have um, stayed in New York and, and, and founded the company there? Never. So basically, I'm, I'm, I moved back from, from New York. Um, New York is, I always say, unforgivable, yeah? and Berlin is very forgivable. Yeah? Um, so it's basically a playground. Yeah? And for me, in my, my first half, half year, basically, I know that, I mean, my co-founder again was a very, very successful um, advertising um, guy. My co-founder Ramsey was just doing his PhD in computer science. Lawrence was doing his master's, you know. Um, and I just like had the opportunity to come here and, and, and make some money on the side and focus on, on this. This would have never been possible. I lived on like f 550 euros a month like for a year, yeah, and that's um, after, well, 
I had a proper job and that kind of stuff. I mean, that's then the, your personal investment that you obviously do because you believe in that. Yeah? And um, I think that's the secret of, of, of Berlin, really, um, that we have, well, the creative talent here, but also the settings and the um, basically environment of a very, very forgiving, helpful kind of um, city. Yeah. So what, uh, what top tips would you have for people watching this either here, uh, hear it in the audience or watching on, on iTunes afterwards. What top tips would you have for people who are thinking about doing uh, a startup in Berlin? So, I mean, I, my number one thing is always do you love what you do, you know? That's, that's the number one key thing. If you don't, then you probably don't continue. And you guys know we have, we had have rough times, you know? Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, there's probably going to be more rough times, but um, I don't care because um, we believe in what we can do with it in the next five to 10 years. And, and it's empowering enough. And the second thing, it's honestly all about people. Yeah? And um, you don't work together with um, money sharks or something. It's people, you know, I go, I'm going for beers with these guys. I'm, um, I call them up when I have problems. And, and that's really the thing. Choose your people because um, your co-founders, we are almost married. Yeah? I mean, it's like that. <laughs> You're actually even more <laughs> than you're, you're even more than married, yeah. Because yeah. in, in, in the German law, at least there's a way out once you're married, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's not that easy with your with your shareholders. No, it's not. Yeah? <laughs> there's hardly any any legal legal way out. But I, I blow in exactly the same horn when it comes to tips for startups. It's whatever you do, do it with a passion, because the times get rough. They get rough sooner or later. How was your fund called again? Oh, I, d I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it's called passion capital. There you go. Well, J Jason, look, continuing the, the, the top tips thing, then what top tips would you have for um, companies who are looking to attract investment from, from early birth? Yeah, I mean, do something big. You know, come in with a big vision. You know, you, you can reach, um, uh, I think, 3.2 billion people now um, from Berlin. You know, this is a little different in, the, in 2000. You, you had access to 100 million. So just make it big. And, and obviously, we talked about passion, very important. Have a real plan behind it you know, and have a team that have a little bit of wood behind the arrow. You know, you guys just don't want to all just be, you know, history majors and, and trying to figure out how to code. So, you know, have some hardcore coders, engineering among your founding team, very important. But the density of that type of talent in Berlin is amazing. Um, and I'm surprised every day by, by, by the types of teams that we're seeing. So it's going to be an exciting time in the next couple of years here. Awesome. Well, Flo, before we, uh, before we move on to the, the Q&A, and I promise we'll have plenty of time for your questions, um, Flo, uh, just briefly tell me what's, what does the future hold for I am and what does the future hold for photography? Absolutely. So as I said, like, we are um, absolutely gearing up to, to launch our marketplace um, and have been running some really su successful campaigns and collaborations already with some, some big brands, so um, that's, that's pretty cool. And I think the most important thing is we, we, we honestly looked at hundreds of thousands of Im images here and talk to um, many, many, many professional image buyers. Uh, and I think what we see is a big trend is, um, well, especially brands, uh, marketeers, are moving away from this stocky, stocky, redundant, boring, kind of, well, um, confident business handshake uh, photography style, uh, um, and moving towards authentic, real photography. Uh. And that is something um, that all these guys working in big agencies or in, in, in marketing departments can't buy right now. Yeah? And we have a huge opportunity here t for the first time to make that kind of content, your content, accessible um, to, to these guys. Uh, and that is happening right now. Uh, and um, that's cool. You can't buy an image on Facebook or Twitter or Foursquare, and you will never be able to do that. And um, that's what keeps us going. And that's exactly, I mean, if you look at, um, think about yourself as a marketeer, yeah? um, it's quite obvious you don't, it's, it's way more authentic to communicate through your audience yeah, or through your basically consumers rather than talking about them yeah? and that is the major shift um, that we are seeing and which is the fundament for for what we do and uh, be honest yeah super cool photographer in new york right super cool startup entrepreneur in berlin which is more super cool um it's, it's honestly like uh, the thing is I, I haven't touched an slr camera since 2009 uh, and I probably don't intend to um, because it's um, way too heavy for me to carry around and it's just a new style of, of um, well, um, 
photography on the spot, you know? And for me, this is something I can do whenever I want to, but I, honestly, I consider myself, I, I gr I've grown into a different, color photo a different kind of photographer, and I've, I probably would have been a really bad one. Yeah, so um, lucky you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, a good choice made then. Right, uh, time for some questions. Please uh, put your hands up if you have a question, and I will, uh, I will call upon you. So, questions, please. There we go, one right at the back there on the left. My left. Hello, I'm Detlef Eller, working on a on a film actually about entrepreneurship, and um, I'd like to ask you, Flo, the 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 notion of having stock footage on iPhone and that kind of mobile photography is great, but would you go on and cater to the professionals, like running around with the DSLRs or with the Dragon, maybe? I mean, do you intend to expand expand the platform? So think about Polaroid. Think about um, well these kind of cameras. Uh, think about um, Insta um, frames. You know, um, it's not about mobile or not about um, any other kind of platforms. It's about photography. Yeah? And what what the cool thing about these mobile phones is access. Yeah? So we give people access right away, and we are able to reach a global community of photographers within within an instant. And that is really what's changing here. Um, so honestly, like the future of photography is just going to be broader yeah, and everyone can choose their own weapons and um, my map weapon right now is a, is a mobile phone and um, I'm pretty happy with that. Cool, thanks. Good, next question please. Uh, one here on the right, uh, the lady in the black. Hi, my name is Bretta. I have a question because um, just only using photos from the phone is the size you can use of it is pretty limited. So you only use it for web um, purposes or you go try to go for print or? Mm -hmm. So basically, I mean, it's an, it's a general, a very good question, first of all. Um, a general trend that we um, see very, very poorly implemented by other photo apps out there because they really decrease the resolution um, and image, qua image quality. Yeah? And um, we basically um, came up with a very, very, very um, decent um, technology basically to um, have the maximum output of the image still there. Yeah? So we have way bigger files and, 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 and image sizes than, others, than other mobile apps do. Um, and in the end, you know, well, um, Murphy's Law, you know, like we, I mean, it's, it's time is for us basically moving here. Um, so just what I said at the beginning, like two years ago, two years ahead, um, that's going to be amazing, 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 really cool megapixel cameras and sensors right on your phone. Um, and the, to, the, to the question before as well, um, you know, it's not about mobile alone. Good, thank you. Next question. Two of uh, Europe's top VCs here. Surely you have something to ask them. There we go. Question here on the right again. Hi. Uh, Hi. My question is mainly to Flo. Flo, you um, mentioned at the beginning something about photo ownership. And um, I actually wanted to share something I read on Tumblr just five minutes before you started speaking. And uh, it's from a user who has probably 100,000 followers. And he wrote, um, quote, I don't gain anything from having this blog, so why do I have to credit anyone for their art, which they chose to post unwatermarked on the internet? And basically my question is, as, um, digital, as photography has changed, and um, like if the idea of ownership has also changed. And I'm wondering, especially with I am starting a marketplace and basically monetizing photography that's on the internet, um, what the intention or w your view on photo ownership and especially uh, with new and younger users of the internet and of photography, how they understand photography mm -hmm. and ownership. And just like this user who says that um, Basically, if you don't want me to steal your photo or your art, Absolutely. you have to have a big, basically, photo stock watermark. Over Absolutely. It. So I think that's an on-spot question because um, that's that's a huge problem, you know, um, in, in in social networks. If you guys upload a photo to to well, Facebook or whatever, you grant these guys a royalty-free license of that single photo, and they can use that in the next whatever campaign. Yeah? And that is something that really struck us and that we wanted to change. And um, we could have completely um, gone the same route, you know, but what we've chosen is basically to ask everyone who joins us for an opt-in. Uh, 
which is fundamentally different, so we care about that. So if you are a photographer on IAM, basically, you have the option, the right, to decide whether you want to sell parts of your images, all your images, um, on the marketplace. Yeah? And that is just key, because we want to respect that um, and um, make that very transparent and simple. Um, and I think that will also make us successful, because we just play with open cards. Right. Uh, question here, uh, this gentleman on the yeah. aisle. Hi, my name's Michael. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, can you tell us a little bit about the process you went through to find the business model? Was it always clear that it would be a market for mobile stock photography, or were there mm -hmm. other models that you considered? And was it a what was the process behind that? Oh, we've certainly thought about selling filters. Trust me. <laughs> but um, no, honestly, like I think what what I mean, Stefan knows that excited us in the in from very very early was. Um, that notion of um, a digital oblivion, you know, like a, a mess out there. I remember that image basically of a gallery in Amsterdam where basically this um, a cool artist um, printed all photos taken on, f uh, taken on Flickr on a single day and print that out um, and just dumped it in that gallery, you know? And that's just a visual um, kind of um, proof of what's, what we're all doing here, you know? And, and, and that was, I mean, my, my co-founder Ramsey and our, our CTO um, claimed that word of a data cube, you know? And that is really the, the well, I, c um, I think data is beautiful. And um, the, the data cube is the potential of automatically categorizing images, which hasn't been possible before. You know, and we knew that, well, think about your camera. There's two crappy, well, two apps that can be improved. Your camera app, which is not social. Yeah? The second one is your camera roll, because how long are you actually scrolling to find that photo on the Cote d'Azur with your family on uh, the restaurant on the, on the, on the ocean? Uh, what we can actually do is give you quick access to that photos and find it right away. Uh, and um, that is something that opens up, opens up obviously way more opportunities here. Uh, and um, you know, we're going to use that technology um, to, well, I say it again, to enable this new generation of photographers um, to, um, to uh, well, to be successful. So coming back, there, there was probably the underlying, um, and as, as you said as well, uh, I mean, there, there was from the from day one there was a strong technical play within IM, um, with the data cube actually attributing several criteria to each and every photo to make this searchable, and that is going to hopefully change the industry again. But yes, they <laughs> thought about selling filters as well. We had this discussion. Yes, yes and and, and, there was discussion. and obviously uh, with any startup, there were micro pivots along the way as to how to find the right business model. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we, we brought in a pretty core team of advisors with, with many decades of experience in both the stock photography and other licensing businesses. And, uh, and we think the model that we've, uh, we've hit upon is brilliant. Good uh, question here in the front I saw. And I go first. But the beauty in the internet is, you know, at first you focus on building a super kick-ass product, hopefully convincing an ever-growing community. And once you've reached critical mass, you're going to figure out the business. Yeah? Yeah, that but it's all about timing as well. You know, yeah. like if you have great content and you have this marketeers I spoke earlier about, um, they don't get it or there's no need on the other side, on the demand side. Well, it's too early. Yeah? And um, I think we started quite early, um, but it was good because we learned a lot about building these products and, and, and figuring out um, when is the right timing and actually grew in, 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 in size as well. Um, hi, my name is Monica. Hi. I have a question for Stefan and Jason. How do you spot the startups you want to support? So I think that uh, we can offer, we can uh, we can mention that from different levels. You know, we, we do predominantly early stage uh, investing, so you know. Anything above 500k to, to 10 million, and uh, and I think on the seed stage, um, you know, Stefan's doing, you know, um, you know, probably much lower and also h uh, higher, bit up to a, a certain cap. Um, f from us, um, I think it's much more important to, s to see the teams. Um, they've got the vision. Um, they have proof points around them. Um, they don't necessarily al already need to have customers to talk to or, or revenue or, or users. Um, but we've got to be able to really due diligence this. So, you know, usually this comes through our network. Usually it's um, referred to us. You know, there are a lot of passionate newcomers, but I mean, just as an example, in our latest fund, you know, it's 72% repeat entrepreneurs who we've invested in. You know, these are people who usually have already scaled their first compa company, um, and it helps accelerate um, the whole process. 
Again, that's not to say we don't invest in passionate newcomers, but, but there is a difference. But the bar for these newcomers is higher. But today, you know, you can have the most amazing advice. I mean, we often advise, we often, you know, send these entrepreneurs to, to angel investors. Um, um, but, you know, you can often, you know, go and look at what um, um, 500 startups Dave McClure has printed. And it's phenomenal what you get about his product advice. And just based on that advice, based on his 20-something presentations on SlideShare, you know, you're already um, ahead of the game. And so for us, it's, um, it's kind of getting above the cacophony. You know, write to us on, uh, on IM. You know, say, hey, here I am. Make a comment or through any of these other medium that we might be invested in. You know, just don't send an email to tech at, you know, early bird because it'll be lost in the cacophony of, of 10,000 opportunities that we see a year. Great. There was a, yeah, the guy at the back. Hello, my name is Tobias. I've got a question for Flo. Um, <coughs> at the end, you want to earn money, so I can imagine you make some RP deals, perhaps with big media companies or advertising companies. And um, when I read your terms of uh, and conditions, you said you, you won't allow to appear the images in some, I don't know, wrong background or something like that. Um, do you have the control about it, or do I as a user have it? Because perhaps uh, I want to sell my pictures on your marketplace, and you've got a deal with, as we are in Berlin, perhaps with Axel Springer or so, and I don't want to see my pictures on build. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, do you have any guidelines or where, who yeah, has the control at so the end? We have, we have very, very high ethical standards, um, I'd say. Uh, I mean, that's how, how you have to put it, and you can. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> in the context <laughs> of Axel Springer. <laughs> that you can draw your own picture of. Um, no. The way I put it, obviously, we don't do um, any dodgy stuff. Um, we don't do any um, kind of, um, well, uh, don't allow the images to appear in, in, um, in uh, you can all read that in our in terms of service, basically, um, in, um, well, tobacco campaigns or uh, what kind of, that kind of stuff, uh, um, for to abuse the images in a certain way. Uh, but what you said is it's, it's going to be quite difficult, honestly, um, to, to control that. Uh, and um, what you what you opt into is basically to allow that photography to be um, shown in the media. And what I can only see, uh, what I can only say, like what is better, have someone steal your image or actually earn money with it? Uh, and that's what we want to change. Good. I think we have time for one more question, and it's the guy here who's had his hand up for a while. Uh, Alessandro. <laughs> I love the I love the mission concept, yeah. and I think it's really useful. I love this um, photo philanthropy mission. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, this was amazing, really. And I think this is a concept for no profit to gain visibility mm -hmm. and to easily access fundraising opportunities for your channels. So the uh, the question is, if you are interested to go further in it, and in that case, I'm interested. I mean. So Most definitely, um, because that's in the end also what, what kind of sets us apart here, you know. If you look at the traditional um, content stock companies, you know, they have, um, well, a couple of thousands or, well, hundred thousands of photographers and they're not really able to do that, you know. And we, what we are talking about is, is many, many millions, tens of millions of photographers all over the world um, that we have access to. And um, what we find out and also through talking to brands, um, it's it's really about connecting those worlds together um, and, and creating beautiful content on the fly. Uh, um, and I said like about that NGOs that you said, we have some amazing work already done with an um, um, uh, NGO in UK called Cancer Research UK. Um, we are um, doing some really good stuff with this photo philanthropy um, um, concept. So I'm very excited to also support um, that kind of businesses or NGOs on, on our side as well. Great. Well, uh, thank you very much to uh, Flo, Stefan, and Jason. Um, I'm David Knight from Silicon LA. Thank you very much to all of you for uh, coming along today, and I hope you enjoyed it.